So welcome to Applied Maths. And in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the project that you have to hand up in 2025. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about how you get yourself set up to do the project, how you get all your documents together. I'm also going to give you an example of a type of project, but I'm not going to do the project for you. You have to do it yourself. You know, it's no point in getting someone else to do it. Um, you get, might get your full marks, but you want to be educated and you want to get the full value of doing a project. So all I'm doing here is explaining to you the process of doing the project so you can maximize the amount of marks you're going to get. First of all, the project is worth 100 marks. That's 100 out of 500 altogether for the applied maths exam. So that means there's 400 marks for the written paper. So in other words, the project would be uh, 100 out of 500. The project is worth 20% of the marks. The deadline is for you to submit this to your teacher is Friday the 4th of April 2025. So you have plenty of time. It's not going to take you a huge amount of time to do it. I wouldn't be spending weeks and weeks and weeks on it. Um, I would plan it and I would get it done fairly quickly. So don't put yourself under enormous pressure. Now, where am I going to do this particular project? Well, you're going to do it inside what's called a digital completion booklet. You download that from the examinations website, www.examinations.ie. It is a Word document. Now, don't change anything. They have a font there, which is Arial size 12. Leave it like that. Don't change the margins, change nothing. It is a Word document, and when you're finished with that Word document, you're going to export that Word document as a PDF, and that PDF is going to be submitted to your teacher. Word, I find messy, because you're going to put down tables and diagrams and so on, and they can go all over the place. So if you need some help, get somebody to help you with the Word document, in the sense that you don't want one heading on its own on the next page, not connected to the original. So if you want a little bit of help, get help on that. There's no problem getting help on formatting your project so it looks very, very good. So let me have a look at the, um, the digital booklet. So here's our digital booklet, which you're going to download. And on this, you've got to put in your examination number and you've got to put in your date of birth. So put those Put that information at the very end. There's lots and lots of information about all the things that I'm going to talk about today, but I'll give you the most important information from all of this. But let's get to the part where we start filling it in. So here you go. You're going to type in your title and you're going to fill it from that point onwards. So I'll go through that throughout this class. There are certain restrictions in your project. Um, the restrictions are talked about in that digital booklet. Uh, but here are the main ones that you need to know. You can't just keep on writing and writing and writing, no matter how wonderful your project is. So there is a maximum of 900 words. That's not, that won't take you a huge amount of time. And of those 900 words, we're not including references. The references are where you get the information. They're not including equations. They're not including diagrams. They're not including charts. So the 900 words are exclusive of that. Don't go over the 900. Like it's one place where they can catch you out. You don't want to be caught out by something silly. So make sure you're under the 900 words. You know, get it to about, you know, 880 or whatever. Don't get it to 899. Just get it uh, under the 900. What about my images? Yes, there's a maximum of 20 images. And images include graphs, tables and charts. Look, 20 is plenty. You don't want any more than that. No videos in there. And then when you export your Word as a PDF, the maximum size of your, your file should be 100 megabytes. Okay, I'll get more into detail about that later on. Now, what's my brief? Every year, they give you the title of the project. They give it to you in early November. And the title of the project this year is Populations. 
You can download the brief from the Applied Maths platform or you can do it from the examinations website as well. Now the first thing you've got to do before you're starting anything, I've got to choose a title, something to do with populations, something that I'm interested in. Now what title will I choose? Well you may know already. Well if you don't know, I actually think uh, get chat gpt.com to help you. Now we are allowed to use AI as long as we quote it. So AI is not going to do the project for you and you shouldn't let it do the project for you. It should be your own work. But AI, what AI does very well is it speeds up the process. So instead of me thinking about titles for weeks and weeks, it may come up with a nice title for me. Also, when I get that title, I might, I might put it back into the chat GPT and it might come up with lots of data for me. And that data, it would have collected from Wikipedia and other places. So in other words, it's just saving me time. Instead of me having to go looking for that data, I've got AI, and that's what chat GPT is, artificial intelligence, just to help me to speed up the process. Anyway, let's have a look at our brief. So here's the brief. Um, it says complete a mathematical modeling project and report based on the following brief. The populations of humans and other organisms change over time. The population of the community will change due to rates of births and deaths, but will also change due to migration. Changes in population may be influenced by factors such as economic development, famine, drought, and so on. Based on historical data, mathematical models may be developed to predict the size of future populations. So we're going to do some kind of uh, project on populations. Um, what kind of maths will we use? Well, we want to really use the maths from our course. Should I use maths from third level that's not on the course? Well, you can, but I advise against it because the person correcting your project mightn't even know that maths. I would try and use maths that we already have. So all the stuff we have on linear functions, recurrence relations, that's a big one, difference equations, differential equations, they're the main ones I would use. Differential equations, difference equations, and whatever. I will try and get that into my project. But of course, it's up to you. You can make that decision. So that's the brief of my modeling project. Now, what title am I going to pick? So I said to you already, you can get a bit of help if you want from ChatGPT. So go to chatgpt.com and there's a box there. And I've just written in something very simple, like give me 10 ideas for a project on applied maths. So press that arrow button. And it comes up with these 10 ideas, global population trends, population resource distribution, impact of migration and population dynamics, population aging and its social impacts, and so on. Read through it. And you just might come up with an idea that you like, and you can stick with that idea. And then whatever that idea is, you could actually take that, let's say you want number five, you could take that, that, that idea, put it back into chat GPT, and it might provide a lot of data for you. So use AI to your advantage. And quote, if you use AI, quote that as a reference in your, uh, in your report. Okay, so let's go through how we're going to write up the project and the marks assigned to each part of the write-up or your report. Uh, download these notes, Modeling Project 2025, from the platform. As I said, I'm not going to do the project for you, but I'm giving you an example of a project. It's only a sketch. It's not fully written up, but it's just to show you the steps that you have to follow through. Now, the first thing you need uh, to fill into your digital uh, booklet is the title. There's no marks for writing down your title. In my title is a mathematical model to describe human populations. Not very imaginative, but that's your title. That's the first thing you've got to do. The next thing you've got to do, and there are 20 marks for this, you've got to talk about the introduction and the research. So my introduction and research involves four parts. I need to describe the problem I'm trying to describe or I'm trying to solve. So describe that in a couple of paragraphs. 
I've got to give my sources and references. Where did I get my information from? Did I get it from Wikipedia or whatever? And remember, that information there is not part of your 900 maximum word count. Uh, the data that you're going to use, any tables of results or whatever, uh, put them in here as well. And the variables I'm going to use. For example, in this particular project that I'm going to do, I'm going to use P for population. And I think I'm measuring it in billions at one stage, maybe millions later on. And I've got time. So I'm putting the time in my particular project in decades rather than years so I can get a bit of a trend. So if I look at the notes that I asked you to download, there is my title. Now, as I keep on saying, my project is incomplete. I'm not doing the project for you. You can get ideas about the structure and so on, but you really have to do your own project because that's what it means to be educated. So the title is a mathematical model to describe human populations. Now, my introduction and research for 20 marks, the problem, well, my, I've defined my problem as the growth of the Earth's population is a pressing issue especially with the effects of climate change and limited food supply and water resources. We want to develop a mathematical description that will predict human populations over time, allowing authorities for, to plan for changes in population. That's a nice, simple description of what I'm trying to do. What are my sources? I'm not exhausted of here because, as I said, this is just an outline. Wikipedia, but you have to go into which part of Wikipedia you took it from. United Nations report on populations, you'd have to say exactly where that's coming from. Then here's the data that I'm using. So I have a table which shows the Earth's human population at the end of a given year. And I took from 2010, when the population is 6.83 billion. And I went down to 2022, where the population around now is just over 8 billion. I've also said that 12 billion, that's an average estimate projected for what we call the carrying capacity of the Earth's population based on recent research. In other words, given the resources, water, uh, food and so on, space, then they reckon that the Earth can sustain a maximum of 12 billion people. Uh, if it goes over that, then people will die, famine and so on. Um, so it'll stay around the 12 billion max. Now that's just an estimate. So that's my data. And what are my variables? My variables are population P in billions or millions of people I changed later on and time in decades. So that's my introduction and research for 20 marks. So that shouldn't be difficult. Now we get on to the most important part of the project. It's the heart of the project. And the heart of the project, we're going to use something called the modeling process. So 50 marks are for this. So half the marks for the project are contained in here. This is all your mathematics. This is you showing off all the things you've learned. As I said to you, the mathematics you use, I think, should be second level mathematics that you've done in your higher level maths course, your higher level physics course, uh, or ordinary level, makes no difference, um, and your applied maths course. Now, what is the modeling process? Well, you know what? I'm going to do this in great detail in three separate videos. You're going to start off with model one. And model one is going to be a nice, simple description, solution to your problem. It's not going to work very well. Then you're going to improve that model to give yourself model two. So that becomes a better description. And then we'll go to model three. How many models should you do? They don't tell you exactly, but I think overall three is just perfect. Start going four and five, you'll probably run out of uh, maximum file size and word count or whatever. I think three is just perfect. And Finally, when you get to model three, we get the best description or solution for what we want to do in our project. That is the best. 
So you've gone through the modeling cycle or the modeling process. As I said, use mathematics that's accessible to you. Don't be going into third level mathematics unless you get a problem that needs a solution from something else. That's okay, but don't by and large be using lots and lots of very difficult mathematics. You might think that's very impressive, but I, I actually think the best marks are for students who use nice, simple, basic mathematics uh, to do their project. Anyway, I will produce three videos, separate videos, on each of those models to show you the process. But that's the 50 marks. That is the serious part of your project. Now, when you're finished your modeling process, we're now on to interpretation of results. There's 15 marks for that. And we want to come up with conclusions based on what we did in the modeling process. And then reflections. You know, reflections are, what did I get out of the project? How did it help me? How did it improve my mathematics? That's what we mean by reflections. So 15 marks for that, not too difficult. Let's go back to our notes for a minute. So as I said, that whole modeling, uh, it's in the notes here, model one. I'm actually doing a very nice example. Uh, we'll go through all of that in great detail in uh, three separate videos. So it'll give you a great idea how to do the mathematics, how to use software that's freely available on the internet. But let me get down now to uh, interpretation of results, which is 15 marks. Uh, the conclusions, the conclusions I got, and you won't understand these until um, I actually do the three videos, but the conclusions I got were model one works very well for small populations over a short time with unlimited resources. For a larger population over a long time, models two and three both appear to agree for k less than one. And then for k greater than one, the discrete model three seems to give a more realistic response to reducing resources. So in other words, I did my three models and they are my conclusions from doing my, my modeling cycle. And then what about the reflections? Well, here's my reflection. Uh, and again, it's very scant because this is not a full project, it's just showing you the ideas. My reflection was after completing your project, you have come to appreciate the extent to which mathematics is relevant in everyday life. Something like that. You know where I get those ideas from? I'm going to go right back here in my notes. The aims and the objectives of the Applied Maths course. Uh, they're in the syllabus and I've outlined them. What do we want to achieve? in doing applied maths. There's lots of writing in there. You might actually take something out of that uh, as part of your reflections. I think they actually like that because uh, the syllabus committee came up with these aims and objectives. So if you're now saying at the end of your project, oh, look, uh, this has done something for me. Um, I learned how to translate the problem into mathematics. Uh, I aimed, I learned how to compute a solution. Well, they will like that. So they are, your, they are your reflections in the interpretation of results section. So 15 marks for that part. The last set of marks for your uh, project are 15 marks for what's called communication and innovation. Well, you actually don't have to do anything here. So basically overall, they're going to assess your project based on how well did you communicate your message? Was it very clear? Was the mathematics very clear? Add innovation, how inventive, how original was your project? So those two things there, you've already done by doing a very, very good project. So that's the last 15 marks out of 100. Look, the project is a great thing to do. And it's very educational. And you're going to be using a lot of software. You're going to be using some AI as well, but quote that you're using the AI and you're going to get put together a very nice project. We've plenty of time to do it, so get working on it and enjoy it.